So we are back with Joe. If you haven't seen the series of the Joey Barnett part one and two, the links will be in the description box below the video, as will links to Joe's socials and his book, which is doing really well. And he's got about half a million views now on the podcast and clips combined. And one particular clip went viral about the sad case of the murder of James Bulger. And I just want to apologize for a few little mistakes that were made in that story. We're going to rectify that starting out this podcast today. And um, I, I first just, just like to thank Joe for coming back on. Cheers. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on your platform. Yeah, you're welcome, man. It's um, getting massive responses. Um, this clip went out about Bulger. And there was a situation in the prison with one of his murders, and you will get to that, but... Just to make sure everything is scientifically correct, I'm going to read what happened here for this poor lad, only two years old. So 16th of March, 1990 um, to 12th of February, 1993 was how long James Bulger was alive. See, I left the country in 1991. That's why I didn't, you know, I, I never saw this in the news in America. So he was a two-year-old boy from Kirby, Merseyside, so that's just outside of Liverpool, not far from my hometown, Witness, actually. Now, he was abducted, tortured, and killed by two 10-year-old boys. How insane is this? And their names were Robert Thompson and John Venables. This happened on Friday, 12th of February, 1993. Thompson and Venables led Bulger away from the New Strand shopping centre in Bootle as his mum had taken her eyes off him just temporarily. Bloody hell. His mutilated body was found on a railway line 2.5 miles away in Walton, Liverpool, two days after his abduction. Thompson and Venables were charged on 20th of Feb, 93, with abduction and murder. They were found guilty on November 24th, making the youngest convicted murderers in modern British history. Sentenced to detention at Her Majesty's pleasure until a broad board decision in June 2001, recommended their release on a lifelong license, age 18. In 2010, Venables was sent to prison for breaching the terms of his license and was released on parole again in 2013. In November 2017, Venables was once again sent to prison for possessing child abuse images on his computer. And this uh, case has prompted widespread debate about how to handle young offenders when they are sentenced or released from custody. And that's just the beginning of the Wikipedia page for the murder of James Bulger. So if you want to look up that, and that is the correct story. So last time, um, you know, Joe has done many, many years in prison, 30 plus. And, um, you know, that's a long time. There's a lot of stories, a lot happened over that period of time. What happened with him and Venables definitely happened but joe just got a few of the uh details mixed up and we do apologize for that and obviously no um offense was intended to be caused to anyone you know uh, family members or anything like that and our hearts do go out to them and um you know i'll i'll, I'll let joe pick up from there yeah um i'm sorry guys i did get the story mixed up a little bit um it's just the name Venable stuck in my mind um, because it is a story what obviously it shocked the nation and it was such a tragedy. Um, I didn't really, uh, you know, um, when I see him in Wayland in 2010, I didn't know what he looked like or anything. I didn't have a clue about him because obviously they changed his name by the time I see him. Um, and I could walk straight past him and I wouldn't even recognise him. Um, it wasn't until one of the officers in HMP Wayland in 2010 actually come into my cell and told me um, who he was and what the crack was and what he was in for. Um, and that's what, what happened, um, what happened, happened um, after I got told who he was. Um, basically, you tried to come into, into Wayland Prison um, <clears throat> on normal location. So it might have been where he's done so many years in jail and he, 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 um, he, he thought he'd chance his, um, chance his luck on normal location, you know. Um, and obviously where they changed his name to, Sean, so it wasn't out of the ordinary for um, Venables to be on normal location. At first, when he first got arrested for, for the murder, 
it would have been abnormal to put Venables on normal location because his name was so hyped up in the social media um, that it would have been inevitable that he would have got it a lot sooner than what he actually did get it. Um, so yeah, um, it, you know, I wouldn't have known who he was um, unless it was down to an officer what told me. Um, and I took the opportunity up and I'd done what I had to do. Um, and I also got questioned for it. And the CID coming to the um, Wayland prison one day before I was being released from prison to interview me about um, an alleged assault which happened on, um, on John Venables. Um, after reading um, the case and going over a few questions and having a chat with the CID officer, <clears throat> she decided that um, there wasn't enough evidence and she NFA'd it, which is no further action. And I was released from prison um, the very next day. Wow. So I was- a Close call, wasn't it? A very, very close call. And it's something really, a lot of, do I regret doing it? Doing it? No, I don't regret doing it. Would I do it again? No, I look at things different now. Um, but at that time, I didn't really know, I couldn't see any consequences for my actions at that time. Um, I know it was 2010, but it was an opportunity that obviously I couldn't refuse um, because I was used in um, various other prison systems as the same type of thing. Officers would, um, that would, would know me from going to jail for over the years, get close to me, and they'd leak out the information of um, all the paedophiles were, which I was very grateful for because that's what actually what, what helped me get through my sentence. Um, each day. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but it was a little bit of action and any action in jail to take you away from the situation, what you're in is a good thing. So um, that's, the, that's the case with John Venables and um, James Bolger. Um, I'm very sorry if I did get my first story mixed up. As Sean explained, I've done many years in prison. Um, I've been around many different high profile um, cases. Um, I suffer with PTSD and I've also got mental health issues. Um, which it isn't really plain to see, but um, deep inside me, you know, um, I suffer with mental health issues. So it was inevitable that I, I would get a few of the stories mixed up, Sean. But I'm very sorry if I did um, cause anyone any distress by getting that story mixed up. And just to, you know, so people can understand how sad this case is, um, evidence, camera evidence was taken from the New Strand Shopping Centre in Bootle showing Thompson and Venables casually observing children until they selected a target. The boys were playing truant from school, which they did regularly, and throughout the day they were seen stealing various items, including sweets and a troll doll, some batteries in a can of blue paint, some of which was found at the murder scene. One of them later revealed that they were planning to find a child to abduct, lead him to the busy road alongside the shopping centre, and push him into the path of oncoming traffic. It's despicable, isn't it, Sean? Despicable. What the hell? That same afternoon, Bulger from Kirby went with his mother, Denise, to the New Strand Centre. Whilst inside the AR Times butcher's shop on the lower floor of the centre, Denise, who had let go of her son's hand while paying for her shopping, realised that he had left the shop. Thompson and Venables approached him, took him by the hand and led him out of the shopping centre, all caught on camera. Took him to the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, a quarter of a mile from the centre, where they dropped him on his head and he suffered injuries to his face. They joked about pushing him into the canal. An eyewitness during the trial said that when he saw Bulger at the canal, he was crying his eyes out. Oh God, I can't read any more of this. This is horrible, isn't it? You know, so you can understand um, when someone puts um, the name in front of you and says like, you know, who he is and what he's done. Yeah. I don't know many people wouldn't have done what I've done, um, mm. to be honest with you. And it would have been a lot harder for me to walk away from the situation than what it would to actually deal with that situation at that time. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, people like him are despicable, they're scum, you know, and the public uh, deserve a a better place than having scumbags like that walking about. Um, and then he gets a second chance at life and he's got child porn. Yeah, it's, this is what I'm saying. The, the thing is, when I'm not, tar I'm not targeting paedophiles, um, but when paedophiles, the p prolific paedophiles, um, go to jail, 
they don't get treated as uh, convicts. They actually get treated as patients. So it's like a, it's a hotel to them. You know, they get playstations, they get easy chairs, they get quilts, they get curtains, and they all get they all get put onto one wing. And because they're all in the same boat, they're all paedophiles. So it you know it's not quite it's not um, punishment or deterrent for them. Um, and then they get put on courses to do different courses, all paid by the taxpayers' uh, money. And most of them fouled, do you know what I mean? So it was good that one of them did slip through the net every now and then, and one of them come a cropper, because that's what they deserve. And if you want to see more about that, um, the Joey Barnett playlist now, we've got loads of videos on it, and um, one's about the hit list that the guards put out. Is it because they get all those luxuries and the courses and everything that the guards are a bit, a bit pissed off about that? Is that? Does that also motivate the hit list as well as the nature of the crime? No, the hit list can, um, the, hit, the names on the hit list will only go out if um, the guys on the hit list are on normal location. So, ah, so they're right, they're undercover in normal location. Yeah, so when, you get, when a paedophile goes to reception, he gets offered whether he wants to go on rule 43 or protection. Um, right. And some some of them fancy their chances and, and try and go on normal location. Yeah. Um, it, it's them it's them ones you know um, get leaked. The uh, their names get leaked um, because at the end of the day, prison officers don't like them. No one likes them. You know it's only a job. And I saw the exact same thing in Arizona. Public justice. Yeah, there was one next door to me, and he was living with the head of the Mexican gang. And when they, he went to court, he sh showed his case on the TV in the day room that he's molested his niece. So they waited till a guard did a security walk. So they had 30 minutes to torture him. And I've never heard such sounds before in my life, like, like animals, like a cat on fire or something. And when he came out, he was covered in head from blood, blood from head to toe. And um, he just banged on the plexiglass and the guards opened the sliding door and he just collapsed. And that was it. We never saw him again. Yeah, so it happens in, yeah. in every country. Everywhere. Every it happens in everywhere up and down the country. Yeah. Um, so yeah, going back on that hit list, um, if um, a paedophile comes into jail and he fancies his chances on normal location, then the officers will pick up on it, and obviously there'll be a a, a file in the office on the wing um, called their page sixteen. So every inmate has a file, and it's called a page sixteen. Um, and the officers, although inmates don't don't know that officers are, right, are doing write-ups on them, and they don't know that they've been observed and watched. Um, every inmate in prison has been observed and watched. And there's a thing called a page 16, um, and that's what that's all the reports. What happens in prison? Um, just so that when you go from one prison to another, because if you've got bad, your page 16 is all bad bad write-ups, when you go to the next prison. The next, the next uh, establishment will pick up your page 16 and then they can like stereotype you, type of thing. Um, as your behaviour of what happened in the last jail will follow you to the next jail. But um, yeah, hit list, um, uh, hit list do fly about and they're still flying, they're still flying about today, Sean, um, in prisons. And rightly so, do you know, rightly so. I don't, I don't condemn violence, and I'm not a violent person myself now, but um, I do believe in convict justice.